Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be sharing my painting table again with you today over the Rencon weekend. My name is Terry. I am a I'm the senior marketing manager here at Renegade Games Heroes, but I'm also a huge fangirl of Power Rangers uh, Heroes of the Grid, and I'm a miniature painter. Uh, I, I love painting minis, and I am really excited for today's session. Let me know in the uh, chat if you guys can hear me, if everything sounds good, if everything's looking good. One of the things that uh, from yesterday's stream of few of the comments um, addressed was the focus, so I'm going to try to be a little, bit, a little bit better about that. I'm going to let the camera see if it's, its computery brain might be better than my hands um, in terms of working on focus for you so you can see what I'm doing because I think that's really important for today's uh, tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover painting, shading, and highlighting. We're going to do an extreme version so it's like comic book style, but you can take a lot of these techniques and apply them and smooth them out, blend them out a little more, and kind of use them as less extreme, less cartoony um, finishes as well. Those those are also uh, good to have, and those are those are typical skills. Um, but I'm going to show you how I take this extreme technique because I think this is a method that is focused on working your paints, working with what you have, and it. It doesn't need a million paints. It's just black and white. We're gonna work with the base coat colors and black and white. So if your your minis look like this, let's see. Come on, autofocus, autofocus, is it working? Is it working? Maybe. Um, if your minis look like this, and they're they're basic, they look great, base coats, good clean, on the tabletop like fantastic, that's great. But if you want to bump them up a little bit, if you want to work your techniques, take advantage of the larger scale of these miniatures. That's where you get into something like this, where it it more closely resembles specifically the art Dan Mora uh, created for the game. So this is kind of our, our reference photos for today. Your miniatures um, look at the art and use that because it'll give you a really good guide in terms of where you're going to put your highlights and shades. Um, and since we're talking about doing something new and trying something new today, I really want to, I, I want to mention, first of all, this is a little bit out of my personal comfort zone in terms of me teaching this sort of thing. I don't normally do kind of more, more advanced stuff. I don't do things like this because I like to focus on fundamental techniques and I still use those. I think those are really important. Um, something like this is, it's, it's Rencon, it's special, but also I think that this is only, I'm only using the term advanced because what we're doing requires a little more brush control. So, you know, having a little bit of practice makes it easier. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, but it also means that, that if you're kind of used to dry brush washing and, and just, you know, doing those basic base coat techniques, um, this is going to push you out of your comfort zone. And that's a good thing. So I am out of my comfort zone teaching this. Uh, if you're learning something new with this, I'm really hoping that uh, you let me know in chat if you're not understanding something because, again, this is it's kind of a first time for me um, showing people publicly how to do this. Uh, and if you're in the Power Rangers Facebook group, you're probably, you've probably seen some of the in-progress shots uh, while I was kind of figuring figuring this out, um, where it was, I was putting some highlights in some weird places, things weren't looking quite right, it took a little while, a little massaging to get there, and that's fine too. Now when we start, like when we try a new technique, I really want to emphasize to be, you know, be kind, be forgiving to yourself, it's not going to be, it might not be perfect the first time, and that's okay. Um, with this technique in particular, when you're doing, all, when all you're doing is focusing on highlights and shades, you can always go back and clean it up because all you're using is the base coat color, which is like your white out color and white and black. And so you can always blend them lighter and like fill it in and cover it up and try again and clean it up. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working in thin coats. I've got a little bit of red on the palette. I've got, a, I, I use, I'm using two reds just because I don't quite remember which red uh, I used as the base. And I like to play with my reds a little bit. If you, if you only have the one color that you based your ranger in, that's the right color. That's you're you're fine with that, um, but 
but I'm just using the two just to make sure I get the hue right if, if I can figure out which one I use predominantly for the base coat. So on my palette, this is my wet palette, I'm going to put down my base coat and I'm going to put down some, some white on one side right here. Um, and I'm actually going to put a little bit more white on um, and black. So especially with white, um, a little bit of color when you're mixing into white goes a long way. Uh, and it's kind of the opposite, it's similar for back, but in the opposite direction. A little bit of black mixed into any color goes a long way. So you want to kind of watch your quantities as you blend. And the reason I've set up my palette like this is then I can create kind of this spectrum of color across my palette as I blend these colors together. And if I need more red, I'm going to go grab more red. If I need more white, I'm going to grab more white. If I need more black, I'll grab more black. And I might also mix some of the black and white together to create grays, especially on the white diamonds on the miniature. So this is where we're starting from. It's pretty basic. It's pretty straightforward. And we're going to study the miniature first of all. One thing that you can do to make this easier on yourself is to start with like a photo of the miniature. Take a photo with your cell phone, turn it black and white, and then drive up the contrast. And then you can actually see it'll enhance the shadows, it'll enhance the highlights, and it'll exaggerate all of it. And th those are the kinds of a, like an easy reference to use. And then as you paint your miniature, as you go on, um, taking pictures of it in black and white will also give you a better sense of where the shadows are and how you're painting them on. Because sometimes um, the shades and the shadows will look different in color than they will in black and white. So that's a quick tip as we go on. Now, when I look at this miniature, um, it's not perfect, it's not clean. I think I'm gonna have to take over over the autofocusing. I'll talk a little bit about it as I go. Is it gonna autofocus? No, it won't autofocus. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna handle this this way. Alright, it's not perfect, it's not clean. Um, it's got some spots on the white just from handling. Uh, as you paint your miniatures, especially like the, the mighty morphin uh, rangers, um, they are the white is easily contaminated by touching, just touching tra through transfer on your hands. So the paint might rub onto your your thumb or your finger as, as you move the model around, you hold it, and it, it, it gets picked up by the white really fast, especially if the paint is like, it's like a fresh coat of paint, if you will, like maybe 24 hours, it's recently dried, it's still got a little bit of that solvent in there, it just picks up the paint. It can be hard. Um, so it's not perfect. This is not a perfect base, but we can always, we're going to be using blacks, whites, and reds to clean it up anyways in the process. But I do want to mention that I, I put some matte spray on it first. And the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to additionally create more transfer on the model. And that, that one matte spray, the, the, you know, I use some testers I'll cope, but you can use like Rust-Oleum hardware store matte coat or whatever they sell in the in the aerosol paint section of the hardware store. Um, it'll it'll keep that transfer from happening as you're painting on these shades and shadows uh, too. So it helps kind of seal in that base coat a little bit and buy you a little bit of extra insurance. Oh my goodness, so many people. So hello, Chris from Charity Gamers. Hello, Frankie. Hello, Game Manual. If you are who I think you are, hello. Um, uh, I'm really excited to to get rolling on this. So we're gonna just we're gonna start with the paints, and I'm gonna start I'm gonna start on the diamonds. I think that on the whites it'll be a little easier to see the lights and shadow. And when we look at our reference photos on the cards here, um, the whites aren't pure white. There's shadow on them, um, and with the sculpt, it's really easy to see where the shadow would fall. Basically, if it's it, if it's below a, a crease, we're going to put a shadow there. It's, if it's above a crease, we're going to highlight extra there. And that's all we're going to do. So let's start on the diamond real quick. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take the back of my brush here. I'm going to go into my black, drop some in, and then I'm going to go into my white. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit of it. I'm not too concerned about keeping my white too pure. I can always drop some clean white in because um, everything's going to get blended pretty hard as we go. Um, but I really, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab a little bit of a bigger brush too. Now this is where your fine detail brushes are going to matter as well. The ones that can keep a point are going to help you. I'm going to come real close to the camera real quick here because 
because we're getting we're gonna get right into it hello tony oh my gosh i'm so glad you're here um so i know a few of you are part of the renegade painters group thank you guys so much for, for continuing to post and inspire me i see all of you post posting and painting and and just it it warms my heart to see especially all of the new people who come in who are painting incredible figures um it's 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 one of my favorite places on the internet um so right now i'm just gonna go into the the chest area and i'm gonna show you where the high where the shadow is so this is a little bit of gray i've got a little bit of black in a lot of white i'm taking it that's the tone so there's the pure white there's the gray in that little corner there um and i'm gonna take that what that gray I'm going to start applying it into and below where the shadow line is. And I'm not going to like try to get it into the line. I'm kind of exaggerating those shadows here. Same over here as we get into the rib, these rib joints over here. The sculpt actually has these lines. And when you have a, like a bright light coming from a single source, it creates those shadows. So it's a little easier to see. And I'm just going to start emphasizing those. And if I'm finding that this, it's not showing up. I can always add a little bit more black to it. And if I'm finding that it's too much black, I can always add a little more white to it. So the, the point of working in this technique is it's, it's really just figuring out where the shadows and light is, and then just exaggerating those shadows and exaggerating that light. We're faking the creases. We're faking those because the miniature is like, much smaller in scale the shadows aren't as strong as deep as as big as they would be if we, this miniature were as tall as a regular human and so we are kind of trying to to recreate the way the shadow would would fall on a tiny figure as if it were a full-sized person and that's when those blacks come in and that's where those dark shadows come in um so i've got those in here and I'm going to let those dry. So we're going to let that dry, but you can start to see just, just like that, right? So this is the side that doesn't have those shadows and I'm going to turn it and already you can start to see the dimension come up. There's a little more on the side here and, and you just, you're just going to go and apply those shadows in. Um, and then you're going to get, as we apply it, this is the kind of the first, that first layer, right? Um, as you apply it, you're going to get thinner and you're going to get darker. The shadow on this miniature as we paint it on is going to get less is become it will become um more more prominent but less wide. It'll get just thinner and thinner and thinner until it's just this this really thin line where the the deepest crease of the shadow is. Um so you can kind of see it here on this figure. I've got the grays all over his chest, all across. So the grays actually go right all the way down to the bottom chest here, right down into here. And then underneath that, where those heavier shadows would be, where the creases are a little bit deeper, I'm gonna paint in darker colors. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's kind of the concept we're gonna do on all the white. White is pretty easy to like, you know, quote unquote highlight. Um, if your white is pure, uh, pure white and undiluted and it, it's not as dingy as this particular base coat white is, um, it'll be easier. Now for the highlights on this, what I'll do is I'm going to actually clean up the white a little bit too. So it, if you can see on the camera there, this white is a little bit gray. So by putting out kind of like a, another layer of white, it'll brighten that white and make it look like the, the white is hitting it. But I'm not applying it full set, like all over the place where that middle ridge is on his chest. I'm gonna keep that crease, right? So that little bit of gray in the middle there is gonna live there. And we're just gonna apply the paint where we're seeing shadow and light fall. And already the chest is looking like a little less flat, a little more dimensional. And then we're gonna go in a little bit darker now. Now that, that those little base coats of gray have dried a little bit, take a tiny drop of black, add it into my gray, and we're gonna go thinner and we're gonna go darker. The shadow's gonna get smaller, more defined, and it's just gonna go in there. And if you, 
your brush slips or it accidentally gets a little too thick, the line is too thick, just take a lighter gray and just clean it up, push it up a little bit. Um, it, it's, it's a lot easier, especially with these grays, to work with them as they gradient up because you can, you can more easily blend them together. So it's just really, it's really tiny. Um, and, and all we're focusing on is adding that little bit of dimension. So up in here where I've painted the gray underneath his chest, I'm just gonna start adding a little bit more shade into there. So I'm gonna paint down and down here. So it's just, it's just getting gradually darker, just a little bit darker. And again, I'll turn this model. I'll do one side and then you can compare it to the other side. And I'm just gonna add that little bit of detail onto the edge here. And you're already seeing, you're already seeing that, that dimension pop in. Now, that's how the detail starts to come and come forth. We can go really extreme. Now this is where the, the extreme shadows and the extreme highlights come in. And I'm gonna, I'm start, I'm gonna start using blacks. Um, the blacks on this miniature are in a couple places, so I'm going to focus on, first of all, where I've been telling you this whole time to put your shadows, and that's in the ridges on the, the, the pectoral muscles, his super abs across the middle, um, but on the white specifically focusing on his, his that chest area. Um, but we're also going to outline the diamonds in black. and it adds just a little bit more shadow and dimension and it pops the white out a little bit more. When you put a pure black up next to a pure white, the white will look whiter, especially if there's a gray somewhere in there. And we do have gray on the chest. So what will happen is if we paint this shadow in next to this white here. So I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna, first of all, I'm gonna come across and do this really thin line across this pectoral muscle up in here, just really thin. Not gonna hesitate, it's, it seems scary. It's gonna be scary. You're gonna be like, what is happening? Um, because you're basically drawing lines on your miniature. You're coloring outside the lines. This, this is not how it normally works with miniatures. So it's really unintuitive, but we're gonna add the black onto the chest. So you can see now how there's that line of shadow and it's very prominent. Um, and then we're gonna take a little bit of that black. We're gonna clean up and make prominent the edges of this diamond. And this is where, when I say it's kind of an advanced, this is an advanced um, class. It's not because this is hard to do in the sense that we're just painting black and white. It's just, you need some brush control. You need to feel comfortable with your brush and you will get comfortable the more you do this too. So I'm gonna add right right into the, the diamond there. And I can make this smaller and thinner as I go, but I'm gonna kind of just like, I'm gonna get it on there. Get that shadow on there, right there. And I'm gonna do the same on the top shadow here, right up in the, right up in this diamond here. And all of a sudden, by black lining like this, you get that cartoony feel, you get that, that really prominent shadow. Woo, a little brush stroke went aw awry, but let's see here. This is where we're going. And yeah, my lines aren't straight. It's fine. Trust me, it'll be fine. We, we want to show the brush strokes with the comic book style, the, the line strokes, the pencil strokes, the, the, the inking strokes of the miniature, um, re replicate the, the brush strokes, the ink strokes, on comic books, the imperfections of the print. Um, so it's okay, don't worry about it, don't stress about it. And yeah, if the line's a little thick, just take some white and push it out a little bit. That It's okay if the white isn't covering perfectly because you're probably where the white meets the black, there's probably a little bit of gray shadow in there anyways. That's cool, you're, you're cool. So we're gonna play with this a little bit. The shape of the diamond's a little thick on this line here, so I'm gonna take some white. I'm just gonna go in afterwards and just touch it up, conform it to the shape I want it to be. You, you're, you're gonna be going over a lot of spots you've painted again and again and again. Um, that is kind of, that's, a, that's normal for, for the style. Um, you're gonna be blending and you're gonna be playing with the light and the shadow and the color as you go. 
Uh, Tony, which set am I most looking forward to? That's a, oh, that's a good question. I, honestly, if I was, I have no say. I'm going to, I'm going to say this completely straight. I have no say in what gets produced. That's, that's driven by the creative team and they're amazing at it. Oops, that's my water bottle. Um, and they're amazing at it. But honestly, in the comic books, there was an issue where everyone's, powers got changed and the body shapes of everyone in their range of colors changed because you know um they their powers got swapped their colors got swapped and i i would love a set of that as a painter as someone who who loves playing female red rangers <laughs> lauren she was like one of my favorite characters to play um this is the that's kind of like the set that i'm like oh man if i could i would i would 100 percent be so on board with that but you know, I, I can wait, I can convert, I can make other things happen on my time. Um, honestly, I'm just, I'm just excited to have more minis. It feels like there's always another set coming in that I've got to get, get paint on and I'm always falling behind now. I don't know if it's just, if it's just me or if you're feeling that too. Um, if you're painting your, your sets, I feel like, like, especially with the new, the new Kickstarter and all the models in that, that Kickstarter set and the Psycho Rangers being like, you know, a whole other set of rangers essentially like that's there's gonna be a lot to keep me busy that's for sure so i'm just taking in the black here and now and i'm just strengthening that line i'm painting within the borders of the gray i'm trying to shoot for where that is um and if it's not perfect that's fine i can always clean that up with white but i'm trying to follow the shape of the sculpt where the crease is on the model and emphasize that chest area there you go and I think, I think I can take a little bit of white and clean that up a little bit. I don't think it is as prominent as I, I think it's a little too, too strong for me, but that's, that's basically it. This is, this is all this is now, now that we've kind of covered how to cover this on the white areas, I'm going to show you how to do it on red because it gets really fun with, with whatever base coat color you're, you're going to do. I've got a couple other Rangers here. Um, cause I want to show you how to start seeing where to apply the shades first um, because I think that's really important. If you use any sort of shading um, product like a bottled wash, um, this is going to be a little more familiar to you. Um, but in doing this, uh, it'll train your eye. It will train your eye to see the shadows and shades because if you're not comfortable and you don't know where to put those shades, uh, this this little trick will help you and it'll help you get there because uh, you're still going to use the base coat color you applied on the miniature to as your base color but by putting a shade on the whole miniature first you'll s it'll darken where those those model points are and i'm going to do a little area on on um my zeo green here just because oh, i want it to dry so you can actually see it um but it gives you a good Give, it'll give you a good idea of where, where things should go. So I'm gonna take this this green shade. I just put it in the lid of one of my the the the, uh, the top like plastic parts, the tray parts that cover where the miniatures hold actually make really good palettes. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's a good it's a good wet palette, it's a good dry palette. Um, so I save them, and then I'm just gonna apply this, and you'll see immediately how as I apply it settling into the cracks and crevices of the body form so that's kind of what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do this little area on his chest here and a little bit on his biceps and arms because that's where the musculature is, uh, is, is sculpted and I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back to it and show you how you use that first wash to kind of start applying your shades um, but the big thing is as you apply this you're gonna use the base color mixed with black to create the shadows, and you use the base color mixed with white to create the brighter highlights. Now, if you look really close at this miniature, you can see the brush strokes. You can see that I, you can, you can see the painter's fingerprint, if you will. Um, it's pretty, let's get the focus on. It's pretty, it's pretty significant, pretty easy to see. I leave the brush strokes on. Those are, those are the brush strokes in the shades. There's brush strokes all over the thighs here for where the highlights would be. That kind of reflects what you see in the art on, 
on the cards. So you can kind of see where those striations, those lines show up. And the funny thing is, is it looks white on the model, but if I take, if I take a little bit of white on the, the tip of my brush here, that is not white, but it looks like it's white. And so you'll, you'll be able to find where your comf comfort zone is in finding those highlights and shades as you mix your paints. Um, I think as I look at this model next to these paints here, I think this, the red that I put down first is actually the right color of red. Um, this, this color here is the right color of red. The, the one that I guessed initially was like, ah, I think this is the right color. Uh, and then second guess myself and add some extra onto the palette. So I'm going to pull it into two directions just so that I can build this up. I'm also pulling it flatter onto the wet palette because it also thins the paint. Now we're going to be working in thin coats, um, almost translucent coats. The, this is the thinnest I'll often paint. It's nothing like my base coats. My base coats, when I put them on the palette, I'll you know move them around the palette a little bit, pull a little bit of moisture out of the, the wet palette itself. When I do this, I'm I'm intentionally painting with paint that almost beads on the palette. So here we go. Uh, let's get some of this black. We'll build it in kind of like how we were mixing the white and the black together uh, on the gray for the gray palette areas um, on the white of the diamonds. We're going to do the same kind of thing, but instead we're going to use the red. This is all this is. I really what I really wanted to stress with you in this class today was that you can create shadows and shades with just black and white, right? This is this is all that is. Um, and it's kind of like uh, a technique called sketch technique. Um, and where in sketching, you, you actually paint the shades and shadows on the miniature first, and then you paint the color on top afterwards. This is like a reverse. I paint the color on first, and I paint the shadows and shades on afterwards. So here we are. And let me adjust the focus a little bit because before I want to apply, I want to make sure you can see it nice and clear. There we are. I think that looks good. Um, and I'm taking that 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 kind of a. It really depends. It's hard to say depending on your paint, depending on the pigmentation of black and your white. It's about a mid tone, like 50-50 to the eye. It looks like somewhere it's in between there. I'm gonna take that shadow and I'm gonna apply it kind of in the same way. I'm gonna apply it in under the chest here, under this crease here, in here, down the side of his super muscular obliques, down the middle, where basically, if I see a part on this miniature that looks a little bit creased, I'm gonna paint that shade in there. And I'm not trying to stick and keep my paint like within that line. If it spreads and splays, that's fine. I'm gonna come back and clean it up um, afterwards. That That's not too concerning to me. I'm not gonna let that stress me out too much but that's where we're at that's where we're at here and we're gonna just like if you're noticing that the line breaks a little bit you can add it in if you're noticing the line is not quite as clean as you want it to be you can fix it up but sometimes the the sculpts and between the base coats and layers a little that little crease that in like that that fraction of a millimeter of of detail that's there might be just smoothed out just a little bit in that one area. Paint it on, paint that shadow on. We went from having no abs discernible from tabletop to like, there's some abs there. It's, not, it's pretty undeniable. We're gonna go one more step and we're gonna take some, we're gonna take some of that, that initial color uh, black and I'm gonna add a, a touch, just a just tiny, tiny tip full uh, of black. Go back in, darken that up, do it again and just, we're gonna try to paint within that line that we paint put down before. I'm gonna go look, I'm gonna look, and we're gonna emphasize it just like that. We're gonna go in on the abs, look, look, and make you're just gonna make the shadows a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner as you go, and just it might be a little shorter, it might be a little narrower. What makes sense to your eye? And again, look at it, look at it from tabletop. Look at what you can see, look at what you wanna emphasize more. If you're like, oh, those abs are not as poppin' as they should be, we're gonna emphasize that. So this is where we're at for adding those, those shadows just to his abs. Now we're gonna add 
highlights. And this is where the blacks will look blacker as you do, because we're not actually going to add that much in terms of white. We're gonna strengthen the red a little bit and make it make it just look a little bit whiter with some some white strokes and and it it kind of they kind of look pink. I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna look a little pink. Um, but by mixing, and that's where I am, that that little edge where the white touches the red. It's very, very subtle, very just a little bit. You don't need a ton of paint for this, by the way. I put a lot down on the palette because I want you to see where I'm reaching on the palette, even though it's not in focus. So I made them a little more prominent, but we're using very small quantities as we go. Again, because we're both thinning it down with water and we're, we're only highlighting little bits of the model at a time. And I'm gonna take this little pinkish white tone and I'm gonna apply it where I think the highlights are first. So the highlight that I'm trying to capture is the edge of the light before it hits shadow. Now, this this is where it gets this is where it gets unintuitive, right? When you paint a miniature and you're trying to emphasize shadow, this also works for glow effects, by the way. Where the light is brightest, right next to it it's actually, it, your eye makes it darker. It's because of the way your eye, human eyes work. Um, it's kind of like when you look at a really bright, bright source, right? Like, like a circle, like I have a ring light above me right now. If I look up into the ring light, right on the edges of the light, where it should be bright, because light is obviously spilling there. Scientifically, it's brighter than further away from that light. Um, it's actually, it looks really dark. And that's because your eye is making this, creating this contrast. What we're replicating is that biological human eye optical illusion that right beside the, the brightest point is a dark point. And that's what's gonna make the shadows look, look really emphasized and pop. So we're going to take that white tone that I mixed up. It's a it's kind of like a pinkish red tone. It's, it's mostly red with like a little bit of white and so when I paint it I'm going to paint it on his thigh just so you can see uh the contrast of the, that color that's pretty bright like it's not red um we're going to take that color and we're going to just do a thin line right beside where that shadow is just like that and that's going to create the highlight just just like that um and we're going to do the same thing here and we're going to just go whoop right above the shadow, just like that. And all of a sudden, you get this very cartoony feel right in those abs. Let's let's apply it up into those abs here and, and where kind of light is hitting, it's kind of right underneath that shadow where the pectoral muscle kind of creates that shadow and then it comes, then his abs, <laughs> these super abs, let's be honest, they're super abs the way they're sculpted. The ab pops out again. Um, we're gonna put that, that that, sh that highlight right in there, just like that. And we're gonna do that same highlight up in here, just like that. And that is, that is essentially what we're gonna do as we progress across this model. So we're gonna apply these shadows, apply these highlights, apply these shadows, and then place the highlights based upon where, where these, these highlights and, and contrasts live. That is, that's, that's basically it. That's the premise of what we're doing. Now, if you have questions, please, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to really look through the feed and, and try to address some of them because I think that in particular, it, it feels unintuitive to, to be painting on highlights next to shadows. It, it, it doesn't feel, if, especially if you're someone like me who comes from this blended highlight um, approach where you know where it's darkest where the crisp shadows are that's where I'm going to paint my dark and then where the brightest points are furthest away kind of that's where I'm going to paint my highlights um, this is not necessarily the most intuitive way to look at shading and highlighting but this is how you get that comic book look the contrast and pushing those contrasts out um, especially in these these this sculpted area around the abs you can kind of see it here too um, around the sculpted area in the abs, right up here. Um, that is really uh, the foundation of this. Now, if your colors are looking really, really 
almost too white, if you're not happy with how white that looks, I'm going to show you a technique right now to wash them down. It's called like, push them back, essentially. Um, you can do it with soap, you can do it without soap. I prefer to do it without soap because it keeps the surface area um, pretty clear. So I'm going to add a pile of water. I'm going to take a drop of paint and I'm going to create what is what essentially is, this is a transparent wash. Um, it's just thinned out paint, really thinned out paint. And I'm going to take that paint, I'm going to apply it all over. And what it's going to do is it's going to create this, this tone. Oops, I'm going to it's really wet so I can actually pull it off the white area. I don't want it there. That's the last place I want it. Um, but I'm going to apply it onto where I put the highlights on and it will help blend down the highlights and blend them into the background a little bit. So they're not as prominent and bright and, and in your face. You can do as many layers of this as you need, as you feel comfortable with. If you find your shadows are looking a little too dark, you can also do this. This is also a helpful way to kind of blend them out again. Um, and take them closer to the base to color without just painting a whole new base coat on the miniatures. Tony, can I post some brush recommendations to Facebook group later? You want to know about uh, what to do about fine details. Well, honestly, if you're a serious painter, if you're painting a lot of miniatures, I know, Tony, you have painted a lot of miniatures. Invest in good brushes. Um, I, I love my Windsor Newton... Uh, series 7 brushes. I think that they're, you, you pay a lot for them. They're like $30 a brush. Um, but they're, they're, their bellies are really good. They last a long time. Um, Kalinsky Sable brushes. This is a broken toad brush. Um, you're looking for Kalinsky Sable. It's actually like a specialized weasel tail hair. Weasel uh, weasel back area. <laughs> hair um, and it's it's really desired by watercolor painters because of how much moisture it can hold and that and when they make these high-end brushes the reason why they're so expensive is because there's a human who actually like ties a human takes a bunch of these hairs ties them um, rounds them off ties them to the brush and then uh, shapes and picks out any frayed edges or any stray hairs so you can get a really nice tip. Um, so we're at this stage here. What does that look like? Well, we've got some highlights on. We've got some, especially in this like shaded area around the chest areas where a lot of that shadow is going to fall and where those smaller highlights are going to be. But I'm going to, we're going to come up into the top chest area and I'm going to show you where I put the highlights on that because I think that's a little bit, a, a little bit different um, in the sense that now you have to choose where your source of light is coming from. So I like to paint where my source of light is usually coming down onto the model. So if, I, if you, we were looking at it and the model is like on the tabletop like this, I like to paint the source of light coming from above and maybe just slightly on the diagonal. So if I know that this is where my light is coming from, if my light is hitting this model here. If I look at where those lines are, where am I going to highlight? Where am I going to place my highlights? And I'll just sketch those out with some white just so you can see where I'm going to put these highlights here. Uh, yeah, it, uh, JMH, it is some commitment to take a brush. It takes like Apparently it takes like 10 years to learn how to make these, these like Windsor Newton series seven brushes. It's crazy. Broken Toad, uh, Rosemary and Company. Uh, I think I actually have a Rosemary and Company brush here too. A uh, Raphael Kalinsky, um, brushes. They're a little cheaper. They're comparable. Um, I just, I find that they don't last as long because of the way I paint and how long I paint with my brushes. Like I've had Windsor Newton series seven brushes last me like five years. Um, so I, I view them as a little bit of investment. If you're starting, please do not, don't go and buy the most expensive brush. It might like a, certainly your brush will not make you a better painter. Um, your brush, once you get to a certain skill level, your brush can hinder you from, from becoming a better painter and your brush, your brush that where you're, if you're fighting your brush, if you're finding that your brush isn't, isn't holding a tip and it's, it's hurting you, it's making it harder, that's when you want to get a brush with a better tip, maybe some natural hair, and go a level up. And then go a level up again. So if you're starting with dollar store brushes and you go to your art store and you buy some like student quality watercolor brush, that's a level up. Um, you don't need to go from one end to like the top end brush um, because you might not, you might not 
uh, you might not know how to care for it, use it, maintain it, um, until you've used your brushes and realized, okay, this, this is what I'm doing, I'm not, I'm not loving it. Uh, my brushes aren't liking what I do when I leave them in water or I let paint dry in them. If you're new, use cheap brushes, get better, get the ones at your hobby store, they tell you what they're used for, take care of them, see how long they last, and then if you want to upgrade when it's time to replace your brushes, that's the point you want to, you want to kind of reinvest. Um, but if you're finding that your brushes are, if you're looking for a higher end kind of investment brush for your hobby, uh, Kalinsky Sable brushes are, they're really nice. They're just, they're a nice investment in your hobby. So I've got the light coming at the model from this direction above him and down across his chest. So that's where I'm adding my highlights here. If you paint eyes, which brush do I use? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'll use my fine detail brush. Like, uh, I'll paint the sockets. I don't know if you have seen my approach to it. I've got like on my Twitter account, for my personal Twitter account. I've made videos about how I do eyes generally. Um, but I think I have a miniature I can show you. I did one for Rita as well on the Renegade YouTube channel. I paint like a big white huge socket so i if this is my eye here um if i was going to paint my eye as a model basically i'd paint the white where my glasses uh lens or lens fills in it's really a large area i'll paint the uh the black or the pupil of my eye in across that entire that that entire white area and then i will take a flesh tone and close in the flesh until the color or the size of the eye is where I want it to be. That's the easiest way I found to paint eyes. That's the most forgiving way I found to paint eyes and on miniatures it's just so much easier than trying to paint a tiny dot inside a tinier like a tinier dot inside a tiny dot. That that's not fun for me. But it also by painting a uh, the large socket down and then painting the pupil in and then squishing it down with paint from the outside to to make it smaller you have just a little more control um so let's get let's get to let's get to the thighs here so I'm gonna start just just applying paint um, as I see and highlighting as if I were you know just hanging out painting and and I'll be answering questions as I go um, but if you have questions about the paint placement um, I showed you essentially the, the basics of this technique this is all it is um, sh adding shadow where the shadows, uh, where the shadows live, um, where I'm seeing creases, where I'm, I'm emphasizing it, going darker, progressively darker, a little, you know, starting with less dark and then going darker and darker and darker until, until I have the, the result I want, um, and then adding in that highlight up against the shadow to make the shadow look even darker. Those, that's that's all this technique is. It's it's also not being afraid of brush strokes. This is not a blended highlight kind of approach this is more this is more I don't want to say messy it's more sketchy it's like sketching it out you you get to play with as if you're you're sketching uh and drawing as opposed to like like painting a miniature in a more standard uh blended highlight approach so you're sketching on those highlights and you're sketching on the impression of light and shadow and I really think that this is actually an easier way especially on these ranger models that are so big it's an easier way to learn um, how to do smooth blended highlights it's an easier way to learn where those highlights go because once you know where they go you can eventually then blend them in blend you'll learn how to blend colors on your spectrum on your palette and you'll have the skills to to start blending colors more smoothly and doing smoother transitions and doing and doing the things that you see like really high end higher skilled display painter quality level painters are doing uh let's get on here so you know what i really do want to show you um on top of all of this stuff is i want to get at the helmet and show you the sh uh, shadows on his helmet and I want to show you the reflections in the visor because I think reflections in the visor is another area of exaggerating light and shadow. And it's something um, that even if you're not doing a complete comic book style model on, 
if you do a reflection effect on any of your miniatures, um, it, it looks really good. You can, you can take this onto any of your miniatures. Um, you don't have to take the whole, whole technique, but it's the same sort of like grays, whites, blacks, and you're, you're faking the presence of light onto the model with the reflection in the visor because this is like paint on a plastic model this isn't actually like a glossy glassy finish with soup with light that white is actually painted on it is not a reflection of light so I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow on the helmet just to make it pop a little more and again when I when I talk about this I'm trying to just trying to emphasize where where the shadows live on this miniature where I see them come up and then let's get let's get to it let's get to it so I'm going to I'm looking at the shadow here so assuming that light is coming from this way up top down across it means that there's gonna be a little bit of light caught on the bend of the visor so this visor that is mostly black um, will will hit a threshold where like where the bend is is where all the reflection kind of follows up so I'm gonna take a little bit of gray and I'm gonna start to sketch that out it's white and black that's all we're using white and black and I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna draw I'm gonna start drawing horizontal lines across his visor here so here we go just like that I'm gonna take it a little bit grayer first because I think I think that it's not gray enough. Uh, it's a little too white for me. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of gray and just come over it and kind of create that like wide area in there. That's where that gray is. That's where it lives, just right there. And then we'll make it more prominent. So that's where I'm looking at a little bit of visor reflection. Same on the other side where the visor bends up here. And take a little bit of white and a little bit of gray and I'm just gonna emphasize it over here boom, 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 boom. just like that again how huh, that's looking a little light for me so I'm gonna add a, just a touch more black to it and just blend that out a little bit because I can come in again afterwards but I want you to be able to see where I'm applying this so there's the gray on there onto the bend so it reflects I'm taking this a little further on this side here and applying that gray out. And it'll give you that visor reflection effect on your miniature. So that's all that is right there. That's layer one. Layer two, we're going to go white and kind of like how we apply the shadow in within that border that we painted, you know, going progressively darker. We're going to do the same thing, except we're going to reverse it where we go go within the borders of the, the first layer we painted, but progressively lighter. And that's going to create that light reflection effect. So here we are. And we'll I'm gonna just jump in and go here. Boop, 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 boop. And I'm gonna let the lines kind of live. If you look really closely, there are little lines in there. You can see the brush strokes, they exist. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because it kind of is how the light is going to catch on the eye. And when you actually put this miniature down on the, the table, it will look a whole lot different um, because it just, the little bit of white shows and it kind of blends in together. You don't need to worry about the, the effect, but I want to keep that sketchiness because that's kind of, again, I'm trying to capture the feeling of comic book art. And there's a little bit of sketchiness in there. It's not... The lines aren't all perfectly smooth. Um, so I want that, that it's a little more dynamic. It feels like there's a human hand behind this color as it gets applied. Um, so we're gonna do, let's have a look and um, let me know chat. Do you, should I do, should, what do you wanna, what, what do you wanna see? Do you want me to show you how we do the legs and boots? Um, understanding that it's kind of like the same approach with the chest diamonds and that you're highlighting and shading or do you want me to show you how I did the sword which is kind of it looks silver but it's actually all just grays and I just painted the shades and the shadows onto it um, so let me know uh, what you want to see 
and I will I'll start looking at my palette. Oh, it's a bit of a mess already, hey? Um, and and also let me know what if you if you have any other questions. I'm always here to ask uh, answer them. Uh, I'm gonna check real quick see if Desiree has any questions. It looks like there are none. Um, sword. People want to see the sword. I see two. Darth Moogle says sword. Snake Strike says sword. Frankie Pugs. Oh wow, sword. Okay. <laughs> Please pick the hardest thing. <laughs> um, actually, it's not hard. This is this is the real fun fun trick. So, uh, I'm not going to show you how I did the red and the the gold in the sense that it's just I based it red. I put the gold details on. I can show you a trick on that uh, if we have time after. But I'm going to show you how I did the sword in terms of like creating the gradient. Again, the way I painted this particular miniature. Light is coming from this direction, from above and down across. So this side is really bright. This side has a medium grade. This edge that's raised on the sword has a bright line. And then this whole side is shadowed. And if you actually turn it, you the, the painting color of it is even more prominent with how light I took it on this edge, how I highlighted that middle line, and then how shadowed I made this whole half of the sword. And that's what makes it look reflective when I'm not actually using any metallic paint. That's that's the trick. This is all this is all fake. Everything is fake. Um, so here we go. Let's make some gray. Uh, so white, touch of black. I'm gonna lift up my palette and see how light or dark it is because I can always blend that out. Uh, I'm gonna touch this. That's whoo. That's a whole lot of work. Um, go into my whites. Yeah, that that looks like a good good base kind of gray color. It looks a little on the dark side, but whatever. We'll, we'll lighten it up. So that's my gray. I'm going to base the sword in it just so I have a base coat to work with. So let's get that gray onto the miniature. And then I'm going to let that dry. It, won't, it will not take long, like two seconds or so. I'll rinse my brush out. Make sure it's ready to go. Now, light's coming from this side. This edge will be really almost white. So this, I use my base coat brush. This is my big, big base coat brush. I'm gonna move to my smaller brush now. And we're, we're gonna put this down. We're gonna put this down. So, I'm gonna take my white right here. There's a little bit of gray on the palette. I'm gonna pull my white next to the gray here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of gray, just a little bit just so that I have some, some blending. I have a little bit of room to go lighter. Um, this is this is the trick. When I get to the extreme highlight, I want it to be pure white. So the things that look sort of white, close enough to white, that's what I'm shooting for at this stage because I'm, I don't want white. I want a little, I want almost white um, because the very extreme highlights are gonna have that little white. So if you actually look on the edge of this sword, I'm gonna zoom right in and give you a good focus on it because this is this is probably where you can see it best. Okay, so the light area is this whole edge, this whole edge here. But then I took some pure white and I did this this little reflective area and this tip. I want to be able to go into that pure white. I want to leave room for myself onto the sword to get there. But in order to do that, I cannot have pure white as my first highlight. So it needs to be a little bit on the gray side. So I do need to mix some black in there. So there's that first edge. Now we're going to start blending. Now where I mix that white in, I'm going to start blending away from it towards the gray. And I'm going to try to keep this half of the sword a little bit uh, lighter than the other half. Because that's just how that miniature is going to work. Um, so that's where I'm placing, that's where I'm placing that lighter gray, but recognizing that I'm going slightly darker than that first edge highlight I put down. And I'm, I'm working a little bit with that wet on wet blending technique I've done before on past streams because I want them to blend a little bit together. I do want to maintain a little bit of that white delineation, but that's where I'm at. Okay. Um... Yeah, and then I'm going to take that same gray tone 
and I'm gonna start going into the blacks on the other side. Basically, on this side of the sword, I'm gonna go to have base, I'm having the sword, it's like Two-Face. Um, and I'm gonna do this side, the dark side. Just like that. Ooh, let's go a little darker, sure. Why not? That seems fine. If I'm not happy with it, I can always repaint it. There. That's the foundational, that's the foundation base coats of where I'm at. Now, from here, where do we go? We are going to, we're going to paint the illusion of light right on it. We're going to take our white. We're going to take that white. We're going to apply that white right here. And it'll show because I didn't go all the way white. Right up here. Boom. On this edge at the top here. Boom. And then I'm going to take oh, that white. I'm going to go a little bit, just tiniest hint of gray. Just in case I need to blend it out. I'm going to take it all the way down the middle of the sword. Right up here. And go down. Pew. Just like that. And you know what? I think I want to go a little bit whiter. I did mix it with a little bit of black. And I did, I did want to have the option to go brighter. So let's go brighter. Let's make that border really bright. Boom. So what you have there, just like that, is the illusion that the sword is reflecting light. But we're just using shades of gray. We're just using shades of gray. And when you look up real close, you can really see the paint. You can see the, the paint lines. That's OK. What we're doing is once we get to just like tabletop area, let's see here. I'll go and you get to this this far away. All of a sudden, this looks kind of like Hey, it's reflecting silver. Oh, that's not looking right there. Um, so when you get to here, it looks like it's ref like it's actually reflective silver, and so that's that's what we're faking. We're faking it. Um, so for the sword, uh, I kind of just reflect. Or I replicated that up into this hilt area here. I just did the gray. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it live for you here. Let's show. I'll show this off. I'll show you up. Um, and and what I did was I faked the, the edge of the light catching on this top edge and then this edge here. So, yeah, it's all a lie. The paint is a lie. This is the fun, this is the fun part for me. Like you can tell me, tell me in chat if you're feeling, like if you're getting this, if, if this makes sense to you or if this is like, this is interesting to you at all. It's it's kind of fun to for me to play with paint in this respect because I don't often get a chance to really like like show you the fun stuff I do on miniatures because I I'm trying to keep it accessible. But this is kind of where I live when I get to play with my miniatures and paint a little bit. I get to experiment and I'm always experimenting. I'm not gonna lie. I'm always pushing my what I'm working on, what I'm doing to try to figure out figure out how I can grow as a painter. And I hope you are too. If you're new to painting and you're like figuring it out, um, there's nothing quite like a rut that, that just can halt your progress as a painter. Um, yeah, so J-Mage, yes, I really do want to emphasize it. Like this, even this model, when I posted photos of it, it looks like this is the finished model. It took me a number of hours to do. I didn't expect to cover this whole miniature um, in our time together today, like to finish it to this stage, because this took a, a long time. Um, but even when you look at it up close, it's not pretty. It's not, it's like, you look at it real close. It's like, ooh, that's, that's kind of a mess. And ooh, that's kind of weird looking. And ooh, that's kind of splotchy. Um, that's, it's, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be when you're, when it looks on, on the table. And when you have these extra shadows on the table, it just, it, it really does pop. And you really do get a very clear impression that this is like comic book style. You get a very clear artistic impression of this, this, um, miniature and it, it's pretty spectacular. Um, so I've tried tutorials on this exact thing and hadn't had fully clicked on me until you saw it live. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I'm so glad, Skull Dodger Doggery, um, that 
that this is making sense. I was really concerned. As I said, I've never taught this before because um, it's something that I've, I, I've been trying to work on more. Um, and it's something that I've been developing as a technique, but it's not something that is necessarily the most beginner friendly. And I try, I've always tried to keep the, the stuff that I do generally pretty beginner friendly um, because my goal is to get people to start painting. And there are so many great talented painters in the world making YouTube videos and, and sharing blogs and, and posting tutorials on how to do this stuff um, that I don't, my goal has always been to get people in, just pick up the brush, just pick up the brush. Um, but now that I have this community of people who are looking at these styles, and especially for Power Rangers, uh, I think Power Rangers as a miniatures game has a very different aesthetic than a lot of other miniature games out there. And so the comic book style for this game makes a lot more sense. And it's not something that a lot of other people who are doing miniature, for example, miniature war games, especially, they're not looking at comic book styles when they're painting their miniatures, whereas Dan Moore's work is all over this game and, I, and trying to capture it on the tabletop is just really fun. And when it's done, it looks really good. So um, I'm at the point now on the sword where we're going to get, we're going to get, like, if you're happy with the way that the highlights and shades look and, you know, that's all it is. The, the one thing I do want to emphasize is because of the way we're pretending light and shadow are reflecting and we have a single source of light. It looks weird when you start tilting the model a little bit like it, it won't look it won't look like it's it's perfect from every angle because of the very specific way the light is shining the way you're painting the light shining on the model in the sense that if you have uh, one model where you're painting it from a certain perspective where the light and shadows are hitting it and you put another model that's painted in the same way next to it and you turn one of the models 90 degrees, it will look a little bit funny because the two models together on the tabletop look like they don't have the same light source. And that's all it is. It just, it doesn't look, it looks a little different because, you know, this is a three-dimensional thing. Give yourself, I, give yourself the freedom and recognize that that's okay, that's okay. Okay, um, I want to make sure that you you don't feel disappointed um, as you spend your time doing this to, to get like to to feel sad about it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of gray. And we're gonna start painting the details on the sword because that's that's really all that makes that sword pop after you've got the the reflected light and shadow on there. So all I'm doing is I'm just gonna follow the sculpt and I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush and follow the edge. I'm really like letting the very tip, like the like the three hairs on the end of the tip of the brush. And I'm just gonna follow those lines. So let me get in here and move the focus up so you can kind of see how that's coming together. And I'm, I'm not stressing about it if it's not perfect. Again, this is still like a tabletop model. This is, this is still a game component, right? Like um, my child is still going to pick this up and probably drop it at some point. My child, my cat is probably going to jump at the table at some point and knock this model down. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to spend the time to, to paint this, I'm spending the time to paint it for me. And if something happens to this model, I can't be that precious about it. So paint to the, the level where you, if the model hits the ground and chips, you can still finish your game. That's, that's the, the quality level I want you to aspire to as a painter. Um, where you can get comfortable enough and fast enough and it, it's not such a stressful thing for you to have to touch up something if, if something happens to it. That's the best advice I can give you is, is paint to that standard because that standard is, is where you want to be happy. And I'm just going to add a few flourishes here because they make me happy. And it adds a little visual interest. And if you actually look at the sword, the sword sculpt, um, it's impossible to catch the entire, like full detail of the sword, but I try to like recreate some of that detail with these little, like just little dashes and dots and flourishes on the curved edges. And they just, I find that it creates that visual interest to, to give the impression of the details that are on the sword in the artwork. So. Let's have a look here now. And you voted for the sword, folks. You got the sword. Went from flat gray. I'm gonna do 
a few more details on the sword. You know what? I think I can actually, I do have time to show you how I did some of the grays. So I'm going to add a little bit of shadow in here just to highlight that middle part. And I'll do the, I'm, I mean, I'm going to show you how to do the gold because the gold, gold lining especially is a really challenging thing. And I want to make sure that you have a chance to get it. And then we're going to, we're going to kind of call it an end because we're coming up on time here. Um, these are, these workshops are intended to last about 75 minutes and it's a, it's a short period of time together, but I hope, I hope that you picked up something from today's workshop. Let me know in the comments if, if you have any questions. I'm still in the Renegade Painters group. I'm still on Discord. I'll be there tomorrow painting up miniatures. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of gold here. I'm just thinning it out a little bit. I do thin out my metallics. Someone asked yesterday, um, do you thin your metallics? I do because I find that they get chunky if you don't because of the the inclusions, the flex uh, in there that make them look metallic. Um, they're more likely to be chunky because the pig their, their pigment isn't as fine. So there is some pigment in there, the, the kind of a yellowy color, but it's mostly the metallic flex in there. And so what I'm going to do in terms of my tips for lining is one of two things. One, I take the edges and I take, I do, I basically do little dots around um, the the miniature where I want I, on the edges of the, the the raised areas so on the sword you have these little sculpted details that just can pick up a little bit of the brush strokes and they just barely pick up the paint and I basically brush the I'm basically brushing the model uh, with the very tip of my brush and tapping little line like little dots on it I'm not painting a straight line around where the lining should go on the the miniature I'm just tapping on it and the paint will adhere to it on that raised area and that's all I'm doing I'm, it's more like doing little dots as opposed to trying to paint and follow the line uh, I've I've tried to do lines like that where you just you follow the line perfectly and it's just stressful and it Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and especially depending on the sculpt, sometimes it's just, it, it doesn't turn. So, we've got the gold, a little bit of gold on. I probably do five or six coats of this gold, just because I thinned it out, and I just want to build it up a little bit. And then after you paint the gold on, uh, you come in and you clean up with the red. So if the gold is somewhere you don't want it to be, you come in, clean it up with the red, and then that's how you get the crisp line that is here. And that's it. That's that's all I wanted to do. Any tips on highlighting on high contrast like Black Ranger? Oh, that's that's an incredibly good question. Um, three tips for paint uh, highlight when you paint highlights on uh, black because black is probably one of the hardest colors to highlight. Uh, one, use a lot, build up with grays, but make your areas of highlight smaller. So if you really want to get into the Black Ranger and you really want to push this style, this, this particular comic book style, but just in general, I would not base coat the Black Ranger black. This is the trick, okay? This is the trick. Base coat him in a dark gray, like maybe three shades. Uh, like, so if black is here, I'll show you on my palette. Um, if black is here, I would take him to there. This is my base coat color. Okay? So it's not, it looks black to the eye by itself, and it's not until you put it next to an actual black that you see that it's not black, right? So it looks black. It reads as black. Um, and then you use that gray as your base coat color, okay? This is your shadow color now. And your shadows will actually be, um, uh, your shadows will be pretty dark, but that's what will show up. And you're going to place the shadows heavier than you would on, say, the Red Ranger. The, the, where I have these shadows here and they're a little bit thinner, I make them a little bit thicker. It will, again, help make the whole model read more as black. The highlights will be thinner and go white. Like, so, whereas here on the Red Ranger, 
I did these highlights. You can actually kind of see it a little bit what I'm, what I'm trying to talk about. Um, you can kind of see these highlights on his head. I'm going to try and focus here a little bit more. You can see these highlights I painted on his head. You can see the highlights I painted on his chest. You can see the highlights I painted on his abs. So those ab highlights, instead of making it this full area here, I'd probably go just this bottom half here, like this little quarter, this half moon right here. Paint that in, in white. The highlights are smaller. The They are lighter and smaller. And that's how I would kind of reflect this style on the Black Ranger dog in the lens. Um, because I, 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 I think that that will help you. So the cheat of not paint base coating your model in true black, but kind of a, a as close to a reeds black as, as you can without going full black, um, mix a little bit of white into that base coat. That will help you find the shadows. And then do your highlights, but do them very, very thin and do them very light um, because that will get you kind of this, it will allow you to capture this sort of style on the Black Ranger um, and on the Ranger in general because like the way black and dark colors reflect light, if you look at say, huh, like, like let's look at me and my hair, my black hair, like the way it reflects light, it reflects, it reads as white because all the rest of my hair is black and our, what I talked about earlier and how your eye is always trying to adjust for the contrasts in light and this part here that is reflecting light it actually makes the rest of my hair look darker this is actually going to be smaller um than if my hair was a different color just because of the fact that this is black and everything around this white highlight reads as as black so i hope that helps i hope you learned something today um in this tutorial thank you so very much for joining me for this workshop if you're working on this if you're if you're trying to see if you can do this yourself i'm going to be hanging out in the the rencon discord it's linked on the renegade game studios website if you go to re uh, renegadegamestudios.com hit rencon home or rencon uh, at the top nav or the banner on the front page there's a link to the discord right on that page you can join me in the workshops and painting chat. I also have a feedback form. I'm going to be drawing for everyone who attends and fills out the form if they found it useful, if this was helpful to you. I'm going to give away one of my favorite dry brushes, as, as in like one of a brand new one of my favorite dry brushes, uh, if you fill in the, the feedback form. Because again, it really helps me. Um, if we're going to be doing this again in the future, whether it's it at another online convention or if this is something that we do on streams again, it helps me to know what uh, is useful to you, what you want to learn, what we can do to make this better and more um, helpful to you as a painter. So please fill in that form if you have a chance. You can do it anonymously, just make up an email, just fill it in. Um, but if you have feedback or, or you want to be uh, included in the draw, please use a real email address so I can actually contact you if you did. Thank you so very much for hanging out with me today. If you uh, follow along, we still have a lot of programming left. Hang around till the end if you can. We have closing uh, the end of the day wrap up today and then we're doing it all again tomorrow we're gonna have good morning uh renegade con uh when we we kick off for the day and uh it's, it's gonna be a fun time i think there's still a lot of fun left um thanks again so much everyone thank you for tuning in and uh don't forget to play your game bye